My name is Lewis Henry Mitchell, and I'm the creative director of character design for Sesame Workshop, the producers of Sesame Street. It's a lot of fun, so it doesn't feel like work. I know it is work, and I, sometimes I say I don't work because I love it so much, but no, it is work, and it's important work. Uh, because we do uh, a lot of initiatives that help people all over the world, not just with ABCs and 123s, but all kind of life issues, life uh, circumstances, you know, even military situations where children have to deal with um, the different things that happen, that can happen to their parents, whether if they go, they deployed, or they come back injured, or maybe they don't come back. So Sesame Street has been dealing with all that. So I get to influence just about every aspect of that when it comes to the characters because the characters are really the main teachers the deliverers of the initiatives of the characters but we don't think of them that way there are buddies that tell everybody the wonderful stories that we have to tell of course watching cartoons and puppet shows on TV uh, I guess the very very first one was Paul Winchell because he was doing ventriloquist act and uh, it was just interesting to me but I didn't think that much of it I just enjoyed it very much and wondered how he was doing that. But then I saw the Muppets on the Ed Sullivan Show, and that was always a wonderful thing. So whenever the Beatles came on, or I didn't care about those guys, but when the Muppets came on, I would stop what I was doing and run to the TV set and watch just to see what they were doing. And then after that, uh, Jim Henson would come out and he would shake Ed Sullivan's hand. And I didn't care about him either because I didn't know who that guy was. But then one day he came out and he still had, back then Kermit wasn't a frog. He was like a lizard-like character, I believe they said. But it was Kermit. and when he came out and he had the puppet on his hand, I said, you mean a man was doing that? And something snapped. This whole Wonder World opened up to me and I just started to go berserk, you know, trying to make my own puppets. And I found out more because he was so generous. He would show how he made puppets and he would get so sketches and show the materials. And, you know, I just went nuts. My mother didn't know what to do with me, so she just immersed me into that world. And so Jim Henson was probably the very first a person that turned on that creative awareness. And, uh, you know, once I did that, I started to explore other artists and people like that. And eventually I came across uh, a book called Norman Rockwell Illustrator. Now I had seen some paintings, some calendars and things, they were wonderful. But when I got into the High School of Art and Design, which I, I couldn't believe I got into the High School of Art and Design, it was, like, it was the first time I had gotten into Manhattan, by myself anyway. And I was exploring. I found this little old bookstore, and it was like it was like a, a stair, like a tiered bookstore. So I just walked in there, and I saw that book, Norman Rocket Illustrated. And I said, "Hey, that looks like that same guy that from that calendar." But when I started opening up and started reading it, again, another generous person that just opened up everything. And I'm that was school. I was going to the high school of art and design, but my school was that little bookstore. Reading what Norman Rocket was saying about how he approached his artwork and the, the level of dedication he put into it. And I, at that time I was 16 years old and I had never heard anybody speak like that, to, you know, talking about, you know, doing everything you can to, to bring the best of yourself to, it, it just, it didn't just change myself as an artist, but as, as just a person, just to reach for the very best of what you can. So I'm not just building up uh, Norman Rockwell. He really is the, probably one of the most, if not the most significant person in my life. I have six mentors that I consider mentors that I never really met them, well, except for one. But uh, Mr. Rockwell is right there. Uh, there's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. right next to him is Norman Rockwell. Dear Mr. Norman Rockwell, first of all, I'd like to thank you for giving America such a beautiful collection of artwork and for making us also very happy. <laughs> you are my biggest inspiration. Whenever I'm feeling low, I just sit down with all of the books that were written about you with all of the beautiful paintings in them. I am myself an artist and I am working hard at becoming a very good one. To guide me, I read anything I can about you and your work. You are the best teacher. Oh, amen to that. I went, that's not in the letter by the way, amen to that. I went to the High School of Art and Design, but I went too late to see you when you were there. To meet you would really be my biggest dream come true. And my dreams are pretty big. <laughs> Mr. Rockwell, I owe you almost everything I am as an artist. I owe the rest to the, to the Lord who gives me uh, and helps me in my dreariest situations. Wow. 
so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> you were deep, Lewis. Yeah, I guess, guess so. I'm meeting my 18-year-old self in this letter. If it would not be too much trouble to you, sir, could you please write back to me? I really need that because that would really inspire me to do my best. Anything you say to me will encourage me and inspire me in one way or another. Thank you for all of those mm. good years. Thank you, sir, and may the good Lord, our God, bless you eternally. Respectfully yours, Louis Henry Mitchell, the first. <laughs> I love that. And that's when I started to really become serious about, you know, this could be something I can do to, as my work. I didn't think about career, because I wasn't thinking that way back then, but I knew that people had to have a job. I said, why can't I, why can't I draw for my job? I mean, Norman Rockwell did, so, you know, I wouldn't say I was like Norman Rockwell, I'm just saying that he found a way to do that, so maybe I can too. Hi everybody, good afternoon. We are so thrilled to have you here. Uh, we have an amazingly special guest with us um, for a very impromptu presentation. This is Lewis Henry Mitchell. Hello. He is the creative director of character design at Sesame Street. And um, we had a wonderful interaction with Lewis because he, he first came to the museum to set up Cookie Monster, uh, who is actually on view in our exhibition gallery. But today, uh, he's actually making a very special presentation. Um, this is our archivist, Zenith Van Ness, and maybe if you want to come up and Lewis can talk a little bit about this wonderful work, which he is donating to the museum's permanent collection. And it's a really fantastic, um, uh, inspired or homage, I guess, to Norman Rockwell. So, Lewis, thank you so much for this oh. special gift. We are so honored to have you. It's my pleasure, my pleasure, my goodness gracious. What a, what a thrill this is to know that something I drew, it was really to try to get the job at Sesame Workshop, to Ses at Sesame Street. I didn't realize that, I, mean, I already got the job, but I didn't realize it was gonna end up at the Norman Rockwell Museum, which is just a, a beyond belief. But, uh, so the whole thing is that, of course, this is like my favorite Norman Rockwell painting, only because he's in it and it's such a beautiful painting. So I said, you know what, Jim Henson also, uh, when I was a little boy, Jim Henson was my other, the trigger that jolted me into wanting to become a creative person. When I interviewed for the job, I had a portfolio that I presented, but I said, when I went for the second interview, I said, I want to make sure I get this job, so I'm going to do a really special drawing. So that's when I did this one. It's an homage to both Mr. Rockwell and to Mr. Jim Henson. I, th there, are some, there are some parallels here. I'll start with the headpiece. Now, Mr. Rockwell has his helmet, and the, the story that goes along with it, I'll let the museum tell you the story, but this is a great story about a lesson he learned about uh, authenticity. But um, in my drawing, I actually have Jim Henson's headband that he used when he performed the Muppets. So that was again, I, was, I didn't know the story back then. So. And then over here, Mr. Rockwell has just sketches of himself that you know, he was doing as, as studies beforehand. And in the corner over here of uh, Kermit the Frog, there's a book that they give to us when we're being trained to draw the Muppets. And it's basically just called the Muppet uh, Workbook, something like that. But they're actually model turns of Kermit's face, front view, side view, you know. So I figured that would be a perfect place to put that in response to that. And then Mr. Rockwell's inspirations, you know, um, um, Rembrandt and uh, Picasso and Van Gogh. So over here, Jim Henson's inspirations were Kukla, Fran, and Ali. I'm sure you remember Kukla, Fran, and Ali. Yes. And then Pogo, the comic strip Pogo. These were tremendous inspirations with Mr. Henson. And then, this is Mr. Rockwell's, the can that he, the bucket that he would put out ashes in and it caught fire many, many times. So it was a bit of a troublemaker for him. So I put Oscar the Grouch in his can on the side there, just peeking out, just, you know, because he's not really happy to be there. And then um, over here, there's a movie that uh, Mr. Henson directed called The Dark Crystal. And the motifs of the dark crystal were all these very jaggedy, dark um, edges. And I think it'd be nice just to pay homage to that too. Instead of the flag, I put the, uh, the creature from the movie there. And also here, Mr. Rockwell sitting on a nice pillow, a little cushion, and Kermit sitting on a lily pad. On this one. <laughs> but I think my favorite little, little, I didn't mention this before, but my favorite little um, homage is, I guess he has maybe a, a glass of, Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola, right. 
Well, Kermit has a jar of flies <laughs> right there in the corner. <laughs> so again, these, two, these are the two of the most generous artists that I've ever um, studied because they, they told all their secrets. I mean, Mr. Rockwell wrote a book called Rockwell on Rockwell. I believe it was part of the famous artist school. And, um, and Jim Henson, from even before Sesame Street began, he did a, a movie called The Muppets on Puppets, told all of his secrets, even before he became really famous. This, these two men just generously poured out from themselves. So I had to bring it all together in this one piece to my two favorite artists. So there it is, and I'm grateful to the museum accepted this as my gift.